People, all of the shops are full of their back to school offers, and that means one thing it is the best time of year to go bonkers for stationery. Oh, I love a bit of stationery. <laughs> but did you know the Humble Pencil has an entire museum dedicated to it? Not only that, it's right there. In, well, right there, right here in Britain. <laughs> uh, and that's exactly where Dave Fishwick is. Yes, Bank of Dave is there right now. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, good morning. I'm coming out the graphite mine into the Derwent Pencil Museum. Now, we're all celebrating the kids going back to school. Do you remember when you were young and you had protractors and compasses and that pencil box that swivelled on the top, but you need pencils inside it and we're in the right place for pencils. Tracy, good morning. Hi, Dave, you all right? Tell me about the importance of graphite to pencils. Without graphite, there wouldn't be any pencils. So the purest form of graphite ever found was found in the Borrowdale Valley, which was about 10 miles away from here. Some shepherds found it on a hillside after a storm. They thought it was coal and tried to burn it, but it didn't burn. It made black, black greasy marks on the hands. So from then on, they wrapped it in leather and used it to mark ownership of sheep. So once the properties of graphite became apparent, it got a whole lot more popular. <laughs> and how much demand was it? It was worth more than its, its weight in gold at the time. My word. It was It was shipped off to London under armed guard. The miners had to get strip searched before and after work. Oh, this is going to get x-rated, everybody. I'm having <laughs> stripping. <laughs> and we also had a couple of highway people in the area. So we had a Black Sal and a Dandy Wad Stealer. They used to crawl up onto the spoil tips during cover of darkness and they were trying to get out any tiny little sliver of graphite that they could take to the local Georgian Dragon pub in Keswick and then they'd sell that under the table on the black market. Wow! Now you mentioned photographs because people used to colour black and white photographs. Can you show me one of them? Yeah, absolutely. So in the cabinet here we have the photocall set. So this was used by people to colour in black and white photographs before colour photographs were a thing and they used colours, coloured pencils to do that. So the, the Quite rare, but you might have one in your loft. I hope so, but what's a few quid? Yeah, Everybody absolutely. at home, check if you've got one of them in the loft. <laughs> now, what about this lad here, Charles? Charles Fraser Smith. He visited the Cumberland Pencil Factory in 1942. He, his request to the factory managers was that he'd like a pencil to be created. Uh, it needed to hold a map, it needed to hold a compass. Inside it? Inside the pencil, but look and, and behave like a normal pencil. He was, in fact, the life Q, who was the inspiration behind Q in James Bond. Oh, I've got a connection with that, because Q, that is the man that plays me in James Bond, Rory Kinney, he plays me in my movie. He's actually Tanner in Bond from really? Bond to Burnley. Oh, there we go. I told Perfect. Him. He's living the dream. <laughs> So in this cabinet, what you'll see is four of the original pencils that we created. Each pencil has its own map. So the idea was that the bomber pilots would fly over enemy territory. If they happened to come down and, and crash land, they could break the pencil and remove the map and compass in a hope that they would find safety. I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? And this down here? So that was a, a recreation of the World War II pencil. Uh, the gentleman who created that spent five years with lots of technology and machinery, but he couldn't match the manufacturing that was done in 1942. He couldn't quite get the size right. So they were better back then? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> now, we've got a video to show everybody of how lucky I was yesterday being able to come to your factory and you made me some pencils. We certainly did. So the, the manufacturing process that you saw yesterday, we use uh, cedar wood slats. So they'd have been put through a groove machine uh, through through the, the grooves we'd put glue and then we would put in the cores of the pencils so there'd be another grooved slat put on top of that and then that would go into the shaper and hopefully out the other end would pop your pencil so we also managed to do some um, hot press inking so we can personalise pencils for, for whatever so you sell nearly 30 million pencils a year. That's an awful lot of pencils. And we've been ever so lucky because you've made us some special pencils here and we're going to put these in our shizzle bag. Brilliant. That's a bag of things that money just can't buy. Do you know what? I think that's going to be really, really exciting. Going to put lots of things in here. But having these pencils, you know, I think everybody's going to get the point to that. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Taxi for Dave. <laughs>
Back to you at the studio, everybody. Dave. See you very soon. I love oh. it. From... Dave's got pencil gags. I know. All day. Oh, all day long. Gosh. All day. <laughs> you those coming all the time. Let me caught. Uh, we loved it, Dave. Thank you very much. That's very, very sharp. There we go. So Thank we've got you. a little update for our bag of shizzle. And there we go. Mm -hmm. You missed it. He's very, very sharp. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I've become immune to them now. <laughs> OK, I'll draw the item to a close. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not sure what you want from me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> right, coming up, 